Okay, here we go. We're gonna have a Hades Omega charge experiment going on here, okay? So let me just uh, put this right here. Alright. We're gonna put the charger right here. And we're gonna put the adapter right there. And Hades Omega has an EVSC J plug in his garage, so we're gonna actually try this puppy out. Alright. Okay, so one. So, so here we go. This is an experiment. Hades Vega doesn't know if this is going to work. He may blow his, uh, I may blow the charger up. I may blow something up. Okay. So this is the charger that I use to charge my uh, Victory Impulse with. Or the, this is the EVSE anyway. So this is J plug. Okay. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to plug this in and then you plug the charger in, right? So we're going to plug this in the here. Okay. I heard the power click right there. So this is live now, okay? And then uh, I think what we want to do is we can plug the charger. Let's let's do it the way the manual says it, okay? Okay. Make sure the power is switched in the off position. It is, okay? Plug the charging stations J1772 handle into the adapter. We've already done that, okay? There it is. Okay, now plug your electric vehicle charger or compatible appliance. Okay, here we go. This may explode, I don't know. This is like not, this does not look like a standard US plug, man. There we go. It's plugged in. It, okay, there we go. There's a light. There's no meters on this, anything, nothing. Okay, so before that, I'm gonna plug in. Where did we go? Ah, this, okay. I got a, a voltmeter here, or a state of charge gauge. So we're gonna plug this guy into here. Okay, just make sure we're getting in some kind of voltage. Okay, it says 84 volts, it's outputting, it's not plugged into anything, and then we're going to plug it into the bike. Boom. So, I think it's charging. <laughs> how do I know it's charging? It's really loud too, by the way. Okay, there we go. So that's how we know it's charging. There is a red light there, okay? It blinks like that. So that's what the way the charger works. This is an impressive charger. It's very small compared to uh, to the uh, Suron charger. Um, let me go get the Suron charger. Uh, I'll show you what's in, why this is so impressive. <laughs> so anyway, we were at 61 percent, and it is working, okay? How many amps it's charging at? I don't know, man. There, uh, um, I don't have an amp meter on this. <laughs> okay, just to show you how impressive this charger is, it outputs about the same amount of power as this guy, but it's much small. It's much lighter, I'll tell you that. It weighs like probably less than half of the weight of the Suron charger, okay? It, it, you do, it would suck to, to ride around with this in the backpack, okay? It's freaking heavy, okay? It's, compared to the Suron charger, it's almost the same, it's roughly almost the same height, but it's, it's significantly shorter. Yeah. And it's significantly lighter. So the question is, how hot does all this plug get? You want to monitor that kind of stuff, because... But it is working. It is charging to 63%, it's at 63% already, 75.2 volts. All right, Hades Omega's little experiment works. So, so Hades Omega theoretically should be able to charge his bike from 
the charger on the Rubicon, okay? Um, let me see. So why, hey Zomega, don't you use the, uh, the, the Lightspeed Bikes charger to charge your, uh, to charge your bike using this guy? Well, look at how, how big it is. It's huge. Okay? Look at the difference in size. Much bigger. Now this can output 12, uh, 12 amps, but I wouldn't do it for very long. It gets really hot. This works at 10 amps, and it looks like it's not heating up that much at all. Uh, maybe we should come back in like 10 minutes to see how it is. I will charge this battery up to like say 70% or something, like like 80 volts or 78 volts or something. Okay, but it is working, so you, as you can see, I'm getting 220 volts power out of this puppy right here. And it works like a charm. Uh, let me see if the plug gets hot. Yeah, no, the plug doesn't get hot at all. It's running nice and cool. The fan works great. So, this is going to be my charger when... Uh, uh, oh, oh, another reason I can't use this is I think this only works at 110 volts. Okay. I don't think this is a dual voltage dealie. I wish this was a dual voltage. So, the only, uh, the only thing I can use this for is to charge this off of this, okay? I cannot use this, I can't plug this into a regular outlet because I don't think it'll work. It's, it's not rated for that, so. Unfortunately, so. If I, if I want to charge at a regular outlet, then Hades Mega will have to bring another charger with him. So what he's thinking of doing is buying one of those really slow chargers, like a, maybe like a four amp charger or a two, three amp charger. And then that'll be for like charging overnight or something. But this is for only charging at a charging station. So this charges at 10 amps. So you figure, I think the battery is roughly 30, 30 amp hours. So 10 amps should take three hours. It would take three hours to fully charge your battery from fully discharge, okay? Um, let's hope by the time you get to Rubicon Springs, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have a dead battery. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure probably not, you know? You'd probably be close to dead, but not really. Um, and you could probably, you can probably complete the trail. Yeah, you could probably, you could probably complete the trail with like, if you just topped it up for a little while. Okay. But it is charging it. Look, it's already at uh, 75 volts right there. Okay. So I'm going to disconnect it real quick. So when it's on, it just blinks red like that. Okay. It's, it works similar to like the stock. Uh, Soron charger and I'm gonna unplug it The fan the fan always stays on by the way. I heard a little click and now it blinks It just blinks uh, Green and red when nothing's connected Okay. Put it back in Okay, it should just blink red No, it just blinks yellow now. Uh, it's charging this one. Oh, there we go. Okay, it takes a second for it to, to kind of figure out how much voltage it is, okay? So I'm pretty happy with this doohickey. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if not having a ground wire or a ground plug on it is going to mess anything up, but it's working just fine right now, so I don't know. Um, the only thing is, like, would you really leave your bike, you know, would you want to leave your bike out there charging, you know, at a charging station? I would lock it up to the charging station if I were you. You, could, you might be able to do that. Lock it up to the charging station, but somebody could steal your $100 adapter and your hundred dollar charger so you better be there you better be close and watching your charger and all that stuff so people don't steal it you know like this is america and people do that stuff so <laughs> sad to say you know now if you could mount this stuff on the bike would be great i, I don't know where you would mount it okay though. so the next exper experiment will be to uh to go to a public charging station and to take the adapter and the charger with me in the, like a, a little backpack and to see if it works at a public charging station because it works on my home on my home EVSC so 
should work at a public charging station, right? Like at like a charge point. Okay, so should be good. All right. Uh, yeah, when we get to about when we get to about seventy percent, I will uh, kind of check the plugs and stuff to see how hot it is. But uh, it looks like it's okay. I'm just gonna hold it. You know, it doesn't get hot at all. The charger doesn't get very hot. The wire doesn't get very hot. The plug doesn't get hot. This plug does not get hot. So it's not, this This stuff was designed to handle a lot more power. So 220 volts, you know, it it's not even, it's not even pushing it that hard, so. The charge cable is a little warm. Just a little, yeah, barely, it's barely warm. I kind of don't like uh, this kind of funky plug right here. It's kind of, it's one more thing to lose, but the good thing is that there's an adapter here, so you can change, you can change this adapter, you can make your, you can make, you can get, if you can find this charge receptacle here, um, and this is like what you use for like monitor cables and stuff, it's a, it's a monitor power cable is what it is for like, uh, for computers and stuff, so if you could get one of those, and then you could make different adapters for different things, but all, really all I need is the XC60, okay? So the charger itself doesn't get very hot, okay? But I definitely, the, if you feel the exhaust here, it does kind of get a little warm, okay? Um, I wish I knew what all that Chinese said there. <laughs> Is what I would say. Um, if, you, if you can read Chinese, please let me know what that means, okay? What all that means on there. Okay, so that's about how loud it is. It looks like it was made in September 2020. It's made in China. That's about the only thing I can uh, I can make out. This looks like a radioactive symbol. I don't know what that's there for. This looks like a kind of rain symbol, and this is an indoor symbol. I' sh not sure what all that means. Okay, I can't read what this are. So if you guys can read, if anybody can read Chinese, please let me know what that means. So. Obviously, it's for 72 volts here, 10 amps, 220 volts right here, okay? Alright, well, it works pretty good. It's not too it's not too heavy, you know? It doesn't get really hot. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this charger. This is good. It's small. It outputs 10 amps just fine. So, so this is the charger I will be using when I, if I need to charge... Um, this will be the the charger that I use if I'm going to charge from public charging stations or an EVSE. So, so that's cool. I can use my my uh, my J plug in my garage to charge my Soron now. Pretty cool. And I have a little voltmeter here to tell me how much charge is in it. So 76.1 volts. All right, cool. It's working. So I will probably I will probably be testing this charger out. I will be I'll probably use it when I use when I do DoorDash to fully charge the bike and stuff. And we'll see how reliable it is. But uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, with what I got. It smells kind of funny. It does smell kind of funny, but it's good. I'm pretty happy with it. So the, this whole setup was about two hundred dollars. Okay, so it's cost Hades is making two hundred dollars to be able to charge his bike at a charging station. How how fast will Hades Omega recoup, recoup that uh, that expense? I don't know, but uh, like I said, uh, my plan is to ride the Rubicon and uh, um, charge at Rubicon Springs, where they're going to install that uh, EVSC, the solar powered EVSC um, station for uh, for EVs. And uh, I'm gonna use that to charge my battery, top off my battery on, on the Rubicon, so I can finish the Rubicon in uh, in one without having to swap a battery or whatever. So sounds good, right? <laughs> that's 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 the plan. But I don't think they've made it yet, so I'm waiting for that to happen. But um, so in the future video, we will go to a public charging station, 
probably a, some kind of charge point station, a free one hopefully, <laughs> and uh, we will attempt to charge uh, the Suran like that. Okay, all right, here's what we got. Hope you, I hope this was an informative video. Um, I have success, uh, successfully charged, charging my Suran with a light speed 72 volt battery um, from a EVSC, okay? With the, for the, uh, with the J-plug, you know? So it took this EVSC adapter here that goes to a NEMA 515 slash 520 and this 10 amp charger, 72 volt 10 amp charger. Now, if, uh, if you wanted to do this with a stock Suron, you could probably do it with a stock Suron also. Um, but you would need a 220 volt charger. And I believe the stock Suron charger is not rated for 220 volts. Yeah, so the stock Suron charger is only rated, this is not a dual voltage dually, so it's only, it's only operates at 110 volts, okay? So you would need to get a 220 volt charger for this. So the connector is different for the uh, Suron battery. So there is the Suron battery right there. You're going to have to get an adapter that goes over this, okay? Um, for You have to find a charger that works with that that battery adapter. This is used as XT60. Um, so when I, when I ordered this, I said I wanted an XT60 and I wanted a US plug. Unfortunately, they sent me the wrong freaking plug. It's a US plug, but it's I wanted the three-prong one with the ground. So I, I don't know. Um, can I change it? Maybe. I don't know. Um, they kind of sent me the wrong one. But, but it, as you can see, it works. So I guess it's not, not a big deal, and it seems like everything's okay. So Yeah, it's just the charge cable gets kind of warm. Just a little bit. It's only 10 amps. That's not too much power. It's 10 amps, but it's, it's putting out like 84 volts, so... Okay, so as you can see in the span of the time that we've been, that Hayes Omega has been chatting with you guys, uh, it has almost 76, it's 76.5 volts already. Okay. So hopefully it shuts off when it gets to 84 volts or 83 volts or something. Okay. But, uh, okay, I'm probably just going to unplug it right now. So I hope uh, that was an informative video for you guys. Um, if you have a light speed battery, uh, this will work. Uh, this will work with your light speed battery. If you have an electric bicycle that runs off of 72 volts and you have an XC60 connector, this setup, this exact setup here, will work for your battery. Okay. So um, that's what this doohickey is. This adapter here is for like e-bikes and scooters and stuff, and it works like a charm. Okay. All I had to do was connect everything and it worked. So that $200 was well spent. All right. Here's what we got. Uh, also, another note is uh, Hayes Omega would like to mention that this would work with any EVSC adapter, I think. Uh, I have yet to try it with my 110 volt uh, EVSC, but I think it should work just fine. I hope. <laughs> so. Um, that yeah, actually that'll be another experiment. We'll, we'll go plug it into a 110 volts uh, EVSC adapter, okay? And then we'll try it from a public charging station. So those are the other two experiments. So, but this is the for the first video uh, I used a. I, I'll show you what I used. Actually. So if you did want, if let's say your garage are, was already had, had was set up for you know to charge an EV. Okay, electric vehicle, um, you could use this setup, okay? That's what I'm gonna say. So, and you don't have to, you don't have to use that charger too, by the way. You can probably get like a really fast charger if you wanted. Like honestly, if you're charging at home, you don't really need to charge it fast, man. <laughs> I think you, probably like five amps will be fine, you know? It'll take what, like six hours to charge it at five amps? If you're not really in a hurry to go anywhere, then, you know, don't worry about it. But I think this, I think this 10 amp charger is it's a perfect size and weight and power output for something that small. I think that's pretty good. It's smaller than the Suron charger, it's smaller than the light speed charger and it outputs 10 amps. So it's it's I'm pretty impressed with this little guy. Okay? Uh but I uh, will we'll have to I'll probably do a later review on it to tell you how it is. Okay? I can tell you this 
the light speed one I'm kind of I kind of got mixed uh, mixed review for this guy <laughs> okay this the power plug gets really hot on this when you charge it at higher amps now the good thing is you can adjust the charge rate on this this one you can't this one is fixed at 10 amps okay so it'll probably charge it probably charges as fast as the stock store on charger or uh, it's probably a little bit faster because you're, you're using a higher voltage okay the reason it's probably not getting too hot is because we're running it off of 220 volts okay um, when you're charging when you're pushing more amps than volts or when, when you're pushing more amps at lower voltages you're gonna create more heat okay um, and when you have higher voltages you, then you have uh, you'll create less heat there okay. you go it was about 70 percent when I unplugged it so it works works good and then uh, the the BMS does all the balancing for the battery and stuff, so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, basically, all this is the J plug stuff. It all it does is provide power to the bat to the charger. You know, that's all it is. This this a lot a lot of people think that the EVSC, this guy. Okay, so yeah, this is my EVSC that I'm using. It's a Clipper Creek. I use it to charge this bike right here. Okay. That's why it's right here. It's connected to my dryer circuit. Okay. And that's the charger right here. Or this is the EVSC. It's a Clipper Creek EVSC. Okay, and there's a little holster in the wall. Unplug that. Plug that into the, the EVSC adapter and then plug the charger in. Then you should charge your bike. Okay. So there we go. So Hades Omega's little experiment is successful, but we have to charge it. Uh, we have to try a variety of scenarios. Um, and that will be there will be future videos on that. Okay, so but but the the garage charger The garage level 2 charger works. Okay, so that that is a uh, level 2 charger because it's plugged into a 220 volts That will actually charge this. I know that I know that will charge this bike at 3 kilowatt hours Okay um, This one well obviously it's dependent on your your onboard charger or your whatever charger you're using Okay, there we go. Experiment successful. I'm pretty happy for two hundred dollars and just to just you know, plug it all together. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you can tell. Uh, I'll tell you this. Hadium Omega was was agonizing over like what charger he should use. You know, I want I want to get the fastest charger, but I want it to be small too. And it's hard to find something that that's small and it outputs a lot of power. And so I'm pretty ha I'm pretty happy with this. It's literally it's. The size of like a cell phone, you know, but like a really thick cell phone. <laughs> is what I'm gonna say. Then you got to carry this doohickey around too. So, um, but this will pretty easily fit in the backpack. It's not very heavy either. Um, yeah, you know what? We can weigh it real quick. Okay, here's how much it weighs. Freaking one pound. One pound. One pound. One pound. Almost two pounds. Yeah, almost two pounds. Not not a lot. It's not heavy at all. Okay, it's definitely like I I would say the stock Soron charger it must be like five pounds or something, dude. It's heavy. Okay, not only is it not very big, it's also very light. So um, I think that does the trick. So I'm I'm actually pretty happy with this unit and I'm pretty impressed with it. It doesn't get too hot and stuff. Okay, but only thing is it only runs off of 220 volts and there's this 220 right here. So. Uh, if anybody can read Chinese, please let me know what all these mean. Okay. Okay, if you can read on any of that, please let me know. <laughs> okay. I do know it's rated for 10 amps. 84 volts, 10 amps, it says right there. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Thank you. Um, was it Shenzhen Postel or something was was the store that I bought it from? But I will put a link in the description where I got this guy from and where I got the AVSC adapter. All right, experiment successful. Hayes <laughs> Mig out. Okay, Hayes Mig here, and it's the next day, and I mentioned in the last clip that uh, I have no way of checking how much amps or current is going into the battery, but I do. I have, well, bam, a cell phone. I have a BMS app on my phone, so we can check the, the current that way, okay? So um, we're going to log on to the BMS with my phone, and then we'll see how much current it's, it's outputting. So we can test, you know, just to see if uh, the 10 amps advertised is 10 amps, okay? So here we go. We're going to go ahead. I, I got all my goodies on the chair here. 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, check how much current we're putting out. Okay, so we're going to go check how much current is uh, being outputted, okay? So what we're going to do is hook everything back up. All right, so first we're going to go connect the J plug into the adapter. This way. I didn't hear a click. And I'm going to go plug the charger in. Okay. okay, I got a green light on the charger. The charger fires up. Okay, I'm going to go plug this guy in. Start the charge. Let me go log into it. Um, it is not, as you can see here, it's green right now. When it starts blinking red, we know it's charging, okay? There we go, it's blinking red, okay, so it's charging now. Um, why is my thing off? Oh, that's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, okay, so we're going to go to Shang here, app, for the BMS. It's going to log into the BMS. Okay, there we go. So 9.5 amps current, so pretty, pretty close to 10 amps. Um, it is... It is about, I think when I left it, it was about 70, um, 70 volts, or, yeah, oh, no, no, it's about 70%, okay? Check the battery state. So there's the battery voltages, 3.8. Okay, so it is charging at 9.53 amps current. That's pretty close to 10 amps. If you were to round up, it would be 10 amps, okay? So, pretty cool. 9.5 amps is what we were at. Alright, so that's how much current this charger outputs. 9.5 amps. Uh, pretty close to 10 amps. Um, how long would it take to charge uh, a light speed battery with a 30 amp hour, uh, 30 amp hour capacity? Uh, if it was at 0% charge, it would take 3 hours to fully charge it, okay? Uh, if it's at half, it would be half of that, probably. Well, it would probably be a little more than 30. Uh, it, it'll be a little more than 3 hours because once uh, once it gets to like 90% charge, it it, uh, it starts to taper off the charge a little bit. So it'll take a little longer than 3 hours, is my guess. Um, and if it's half charge, it'll take about 1.5 hours. And in an hour, you'll get a third of a charge, okay? So... Which is still good. So, like, you figure a third, let's say you're at 50%, probably have close to 80% charge, maybe, in an hour. So, it's not super duper fast, but hey, you, know, you can always buy a faster charger, okay? Um, so long as you have, uh, so long as it can uh, operate, uh, the input operates at 220 volts, you can buy any charger you want. This is a pretty uh, powerful, um, it's, it's a pretty big battery, so it can handle a fast charge. Uh, let's see, what, what's 1C? 1C, 30 amp hours. Yeah, 1C would be like 30 amps, okay? So, you could probably charge this battery at 30 amps. <laughs> it would charge in like an hour, so. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're at home, don't need to charge it fast, man. If you're not in a hurry, don't charge it fast. But if you're on the road, yes, you probably want to charge it fast. That's the reason I bought this charger. It, uh... You know, for for its size, it outputs 10 amps. That that it, yeah. So so it's the smallest charger I could find that can output like 10 amps. Okay, um, you can get like 15 amp chargers and 20 amp chargers. One, they're very expensive, and two, they're very big. Okay, so so like the bigger, the more powerful the charger, the bigger it's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be heavier too. So uh, my idea is to carry this on on my person in the backpack while I'm riding. So. I need it to be as small and less intrusive as possible, okay? Um, yeah, so. But uh, that works pretty good. So, 9.5 amps is how much this charger outputs, okay? In my little setup. Which is pretty close to 10 amps. That's, that is as advertised, okay? Alright, here's what we got.